Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're still continuing our conversation regarding security in Nigeria. Good news we heard yesterday that the 27 students of the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization in Afaka, Kaduna State, you know, were successfully released from bandits' captivity and that, you know, they had met with their parents briefly. They had gone to the hospital for medical treatment. And, uh, you know, we spoke to the father of one of the, one of two students, you know, that were abducted. He was Mr. Friday Sani. He was on the breakfast, you know, yesterday to shed more light on how they were released. But we now have a representative of the Kaduna State Government. He is Samuel Arwan, the commissioner for internal security in Kaduna State. Good morning, Mr. Arwan. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right. So first of all, congratulations to the whole of Kaduna State. It's great to see that after all the protests, all the agitation, finally the girls are back home and are safe. But we just need to, you know, to get into the details of their release. We spoke to one of the uh, fathers of two of the students who were abducted, Mr. Friday Sani, and he, he gave us some details as to, you know, how they were released, but weren't very clear. According to him, no ransom was paid for their release. You know, they protested at the National Assembly, traveled all the way from Kaduna to Abuja. Great to know that the girls were released. But news reports reaching us confirmed that, you know, the Kaduna state government had allegedly paid ransom to the bandits. This was a month ago, but they did not release them until yesterday. So what really is the truth when the government is saying they were not going to pay ransom and we're hearing news that they actually paid ransom? So what exactly is the fact, Mr. Arawan? The fact is very simple. The students of Federal College of Forestry Mechanization, they are out. Uh, they are mostly uh, female and male uh, students. Uh, they are out. And like we keep on uh, saying, uh, security uh, issues are not issues that uh, you play to the gallery just uh, to achieve uh, temporary goals. Uh, as a government, we are, we've taken a stand, and our stand uh, is based out of a deep reflection and reality that uh, we have found ourselves uh, today. So I will not go uh, into uh, details, but uh, what I want you uh, to know is uh, we are conscious of our responsibility as a government, uh, security agencies are equally doing their best, uh, critical stakeholders are also uh, complementing government and security agencies. Uh, effort. Uh, we wouldn't want to say something that will uh, jeopardize or undermine efforts that okay. are being put uh, in place uh, in order to secure uh, other students, uh, especially a student of Greenfield uh, University uh, who are still in captivity and other uh, citizens. Uh, what I think is important is uh, the students are back a day before uh, yesterday, that is uh, Wednesday, uh, we were to uh, hand them over to the institution onwards to their uh, parents yesterday, Thursday, but uh, unfortunately uh, they are still undergoing the medical uh, checkups. Uh, by the special grace of God, uh, we will uh, do that uh, today. Mr. Arawan. Um, unfortunately, the details regarding the release are very important for Nigerians who, who really need to know what exactly transpired. You know, because there's so much conflicting information regarding how the girls were released. Like I mentioned, news reaching us confirms that... Miss um, Arwan, I, I need to ask you this because news confirms that one of the bandits was released... In exchange. In exchange for the 27 girls who were kidnapped. So we need to know, did that happen or not? Well, I, I, I think there are so many people who are out there with uh, several uh, narratives. And uh, you confirmed to me that you actually spoke to uh, one of the parents. Yes, we did. And I have equally explained to you here that uh, some issues 
about security, considering human lives, uh, considering the sensitivity of those uh, issues. Uh, you don't uh, come out and uh, make statements that will uh, undermine what all right, uh, all right, Mr. Aruan. Mr. Aruan, don't you so, think? Uh, in, in, you know, in a nutshell, what I want to tell you uh, is, I will not give you exact details. So, don't you think as the far people? As as State is concerned, what is important? Okay. Is the students are back. The students are back, we agree, and then the, the people need to know that um, they yes. are safe uh, mm -hmm. over time, you know, in their schools, in their homes, in their farms as well. But then again, now, what are you doing differently to ensure that uh, recurrences like this, you know, we don't get to see them again in uh, uh, Kaduna State, specifically in our schools, you know, in our public and private schools, so that the students can actually go to school and, uh, you know, get educated, which is uh, the main reason for schooling in the first place. Uh, so what are you doing? Are you having talks uh, with, uh, with uh, your education uh, uh, commissioner, with your security apparatus in the state? What exactly is being done right now in as much as this uh, student, you know, from Afaka have been, you know, released? Well, uh, immediately, after the incident in neighboring states, uh, where uh, st hundreds of students were abducted from uh, their schools, uh, Kaduna State Government, along uh, with security agencies, carried out vulnerability assessment of uh, schools, especially uh, schools that are situated in flashpoints uh, locations and uh, immediately uh, students from a flashpoint were redistributed uh, to schools that are situated uh, in locations that we consider uh, to be more uh, uh, safe. Uh, this is one of uh, uh, decisions that the uh, government uh, took uh, alongside with security agencies. Uh, furthermore, we also raise the consciousness uh, of uh, communities where uh, schools are located, uh, the need uh, for them uh, to be uh, vigilant. And there are other measures that uh, government and security agencies took that I wouldn't uh, want to talk about them here. But uh, you may wish to know that there were attempts that were foiled uh, in some uh, locations across the state, uh, which was a byproduct of uh, the security consciousness or response team that government uh, puts uh, on the ground. Mr. Arwan, I need to uh, ask you, Mr. Arwan. Apologies Beyond. to interject, Mr. Rowan. I, I need to ask this very important question. What value or how much value does the Kaduna state government place on the lives of her citizens, especially its students? The primary responsibility of any government, including Kaduna state government, is security of life and property. And uh, when you see what we are doing on the ground, uh, that's clearly answer your question. If you take a look at what is happening along the Kaduna Abuja Road, you look at the Benungwari Belt, you also look at the ongoing uh, operations by the military and uh, police. It's a clear demonstration that the Kaduna state government is committed to uh, protecting the citizens. It is not even the question that, uh, that that you should ask, because uh, government is here to ensure security and to also ensure uh, law uh, and order. But uh, I think part of the problem is the fact that uh, you are looking at this thing within the context of what is happening now. Uh, you have to look at uh, these issues beyond now. You have to look at the origin. You Look at, you have to look at the immediate and remote uh, causes and other factors that have come 
uh, into play accumulated factors that have made uh, things to be uh, the way they okay. are. Okay, uh, Mr. Arwan. So certainly, Mr. we place a lot of premium on okay. uh, the human uh, life. Okay, so Mr. That Arwan, what, Mr. Arwan uh, if as the Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs in Kaduna State, you say that the Kaduna State government places a premium on the lives of Nigerians. Could you please explain to me the statement made by um, El Rufai, the governor of Kaduna State? He says that we were going to attack them, and by them he means the bandits, the bandits, you know, that had captured the students at the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization in Kaduna since March 11th. He said, we were going to attack them. We would lose a few students, but we will kill all the bandits and recover some of our students. That was our plan. Nasir Orofai went to say, we know it's risky, we will lose some of the students, but the students will be collateral damage in war, and we will not pay money. So, how do you explain the premium Where place? The what is his source? He what made source this statement on Thursday during a webinar of African leadership. This was a webinar of the African leadership group that El Rufai attended yesterday, Thursday. So, he mentioned Convin that... Convinced by Godalo yesterday. Yes. He mentioned that... They were going to bombard the terrorist hideouts. Some students would die, but that mm. this would, is just collateral damage. So how then do we explain the premium placed on their lives with the government, you know, bargaining that they would die, but that's collateral damage, damage as long as we rescue some other students? Well, uh, you see, your question, your question, and from your posture, uh, revolves around uh, what we considered politicization of uh, security uh, challenge or issue. No, it's, it, it's, I am not, it's not politics. No, Mr. Mr. Arouan, it's, it's, uh, it's the, it's the just, statement just he listen. made I'm presenting to you. Just listen. That's what it is, simply. You have, I have listened to you. Okay, go ahead. You. Go ahead. You we can hear also, you. Uh, you should also listen uh, to me. Uh, your question uh, is basically what I consider politicization of uh, security uh, challenge that uh, we are battling with. I take exception uh, to you uh, challenging the position of Kaduna State's uh, government or doubting that the government does not place a premium no, on the it's history. A question, Mr. Ruan, this was Mr. Ruan. not talking. It's Mr. Ruan, this was a clear statement. Them. This was a clear statement yeah, by the them. governor yesterday. I know, said, I, I said, yeah, I said, I said, I take exception to that. Okay, but if how how is it political it, now? Excuse me, I have listened to you. I have listened to you. You should allow. You should also be okay, polite ahead. enough to listen to me. Okay, sorry about that. Go yeah. ahead. You should polite enough to listen to me. What I am trying to tell you is this. What you are say, what you are, what you credited to the governor to have said, does that undermine the sanctity of human life that Kaduna State government uh, plays? No. In situation, in situation like this, if the military or police carried out an action like this, definitely, you know, there is going to be uh, a collateral. Certainly is, 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 is there. But then, when you are taking action, you also, government also consider uh, the lives that are involved. This is what I want you to know. And if you see what we are doing from January 1st to March, to March 2021, military and police neutralized 64 bandits on the ground. Apart from multiple scores of bandits, that were neutralized uh, via air interdictions. 36 AK-47 rifles were equally recovered by security agencies. And almost 2,000 rounds of live ammunition were also recovered. You also have to look at uh, uh, dozens of citizens that were equally uh, rescued. And again, there are a series of bandit camps that were uh, destroyed by military and, uh, and, and, and the police. So all these things are demonstration that our government plays premium on the human life. And I have argued here that the very existence of government is to ensure security and also uh, ensure that there is law and order. 
All right. All right, Mr. Aruan, I just need to get an update concerning uh, the issue uh, with the greenfield. What's the position right now? What is government doing uh, specifically to uh, ensure their safe release? Uh, uh, is government going to follow the same uh, style from what we read as uh, regards the AFACA? It was uh, done with extra governmental interventions of the former president, uh, Olusha Gobasanjo and Sheikh Gumi. Are we going to follow that particular uh, route this time around for the greenfield uh, student? Well, Kaduna State Government is on its feet, trying all that it can. And I'm not going to sit down here and give you this blow by blow to give an account of what government uh, is doing or what security agencies are doing. What I can tell you is government and security agencies are on their feet. All right, thank you, Mr. Samuel Lam Arwan. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Samuel Arwan, it's unfortunate that um, we're, we're having a representative from Kaduna State who, you know, Nigerians ha are listening and expecting to get details of the Kaduna kidnap, but it's unfortunate that, you know, you refuse to tell us if ransom was no, paid it's, it's, um, and that, and if a bandit was, no, you know, you, you released you, in exchange for kind. the kidnapping. You should be kind to Kaduna State government. Uh, you want news. We want to save lives. But can you answer the question? Did the Kaduna State understand. government pay ransom? Excuse me, I can just speak to you. I can just speak to you here and undermine what uh, we but are doing. Could you tell you us yes or no, Mr. Rowan? Yes or no? Did the government pay ransom? Did the government clearly, release the bandits? I have, I have clearly told you that we are happy that the students are back and we are looking forward. All right, thank you, Mr. To, Samuel Rowan, uh, for your time. The belief of the all right, thank you so much, Mr. Samuel Aruan. Oh, thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate um, all that you have thank said you. so far. We've been looking at uh, the release of the Afaka student, uh, which happened on Wednesday, and we were joined by the uh, State uh, uh, Commissioner for uh, Security and Internal Affairs. Thank you so much. All right, so we'll go on a short break now and return to continue this conversation regarding abduction of schoolgirls in Nigeria and what the government is doing about it. Do stay with us. <laughs> 